The beginning of the Furry Man saga. Here we will have the colourful cast for this horrible saga. No real names are used. Me. A then new player, playing a dragonborn paladin, he had some unfortunate experiences due to being the favourite. Jack Puncher, a dwarf barbarian, the most experienced of the group. Didn't take no bullshit from nobody. Feather, an elven archer, probably the only normal person who was just there for fun and story. She got neither. <laughs> skeleton Man, our necromancer who despite his name, did not get to raise a single skeleton. That's just sad. Why have a name like Skeleton Man if you're not going to raise some skelly boys? <laughs> and our star, the furry man. Our beloved DM. Oh no! Oh no! No! <laughs> you can get by with having a furry pair because eventually you know they'll just leave if you just bully them enough. And they'll get shut the fuck but, down like, you as know, well. You can't run a game. Oh come, okay, look, like, you guys know where this is going. <laughs> Let's just keep going, alright? Our beloved DM with who you will learn more about as the story unfolds. And a bunch of randos who usually left after one or two sessions because they had a lot more common sense than any of our main characters. I'd like to tell you how the session started, but unfortunately I can't, because the furry man decided to start the session hours before the scheduled time and before the party was ready. Because Skeleton Man was teaching one of the randos how combat worked, and he thought that that was the perfect moment to start the campaign proper, despite half the party not being there. The fighting tutorial started with fighting skeletons in a field. This is fine for a combat tutorial, but not for the start of a campaign. So instead of fighting them in a field for no reason, they were suddenly fighting them in the middle of a small town, again, for no reason. So unprompted, the DM decided that they wanted to go through a giant door in the middle of the town, which had also simply appeared, with no input from the players, once again, for no reason. So they entered the very generic dungeon. It was a mine with skeletons in it. Now don't get me wrong, a mine full of skeletons is completely fine conceptually for a first session. 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 Especially with a new player. It was just weird how all of this happened completely unprompted with seemingly no rhyme or reason as to why it was happening and no input from the players. Wait, wait, so, so they were in a field and then they got teleported to the middle of a town. And next minute, a big door. They, then they walked through a door to a dungeon in the middle of the town and it's full of skeletons. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, I do <laughs> love my skeleton bodies. They're, they're, I, you know, it's like a default for me. It's like, you can either go goblins. Or, or skelly boys. Or skelly boys. And they're both fun. I really enjoy them, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I don't know. This seems Pretty like fucking a fucking random. mess, if I'll be honest with you. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Since the DM decided to start this hours earlier from the assigned time, Players had to be introduced halfway through. This started with me being introduced by simply already being in the mines for no reason whatsoever. Why was I in the mines? How did I get in the mines? I would love to tell you, but I don't know because I was never given an explanation. The second one was Jack Puncher. He was introduced by being inside of a box in the mines. How? Why? Even more questions that never were answered. You'll notice that this will be a common theme across the saga. Well, look, I'll give it one thing. It goes it's a dwarf in a mine. It's not bad. In a there. box. Well, why is he not fun? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> like, let's just keep moving from this. I probably won't ask why, but like, I suppose... We'll they don't even know why? Yeah, let us know in the comments. If why? You this one <laughs> we defeated the skeletons and emerged victorious from the mines. We carried as much gold ore as we could. Which, after about an hour and a half long side quest, where the DM repeatedly stopped the game for tens of minutes of a time to look up gold smelting facts to see what purity of gold would be required for a single D&D gold coin. At the end of which, we were gifted our prize. About 50 gold coins for the entire party. Like, I'm Marvelous! Sorry, I'm sorry to say, but see, like, see, like don't get me wrong, accuracy, that's all well and good. That can be cool. But, like... But like, no you need to go in that much. much. Could you be arched? Like, you know, that yeah. also, can you not just say it's like some other mine instead of gold? You yeah. I mean? some, it's an iron mine. You know yeah. I mean? Something else. Because, like, you know, gold mine, yeah, fucking right. Like, give me all that shit right now. The, the players are going to spend the whole fucking campaign. It's like, right, we already got the gold mine. Let's just stay here. <laughs> I know. Again, you know? In this mine, we find our main quest hook for the campaign a book describing mystical cat people with magic and technology beyond our wildest dreams which the DM ruined any kind of mystique or interest we could have had around them by choosing to refer to them only as 
horny cut people. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I fucking you know, I think I, I, I absolutely despise furries. I think they're like the worst, worst of the worst. worst. However Them them and pedophiles go yeah, hand in hand. I, they do go hand in hand in my opinion. But like the thing is, see like they're so much fun to laugh at though. I don't know, like the amount of comic enjoyment I get out of laughing at furries yeah. is enough for me to forgive the world of there being furries in it. No, no, never. Would you not Take that, that sentence back. Right, okay, <laughs> right, let's keep going with the story, will we? At this point, we return to the town, where we learned one crucial fact about the world, one which would have been useful to know during character creation. Magic was considered illegal, except for potions and divine magic which were both legal until they weren't. <laughs> what? And then they were legal again? What? The DM was flip-flopping between what was legal and illegal so many times, I cannot for the life of me tell you with certainty what was legal or illegal in any given session. Oh, like, oh. We, we've had that problem in the Westmark server though, so we have, and it, I, it always fucking, it's always just a beat in the deck dealing with it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, why bother Restrictions. Does it boil your piss, James? It does boil my piss. It really annoys me <laughs> when people are, oh, well, the, 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 this spell is illegal. It's heavy shit. Oh, fuck off. Suck my balls with you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't care. And so my character and Jack Puncher decided to celebrate the best way two martial classes knew how to by drinking. This would later on reveal to have been a massive mistake by my part. Because after one failed constitution roll, not even a critical fail, the DM decided that being a drunkard was now a core character trait of mine. Well, one fucking one, heavy night on the fucking sash, is That's it? your character trait, okay. <laughs> Alright. And so, my character would get drunk and get in usually nude hijinks. Wait. At least once per session, where we were in a time. <laughs> what? Or with access to alcohol whatsoever, without any input from me. This should have been a red flag from the start, but I took it as a one-off joke. Unfortunately for me and the players all around me, it would not be. We begin the part two of our tale with the party leaving the starting town on our epic horny cat people quest. Honestly, oh, God. <laughs> I actually wouldn't be opposed to giving this a go if it was just a pure meme campaign. But it's not. It's a. It's a. The problem is, you know, the it, guys, that it's round by far. Yeah, the problem is, you know, finally the intent. The DM. Is expecting something a bit more serious, kind of. I hope, I think he is. But I, <laughs> I, I would, like, you know, this was like that knack and bark one. We did, yeah, yeah. You know, with the god people. You don't know the if the they're memeing or not. Yeah, like you know, and sometimes be like, you know what, actually, fuck, come on, this, is, <laughs> this will be fun, you know. On the way, we immediately meet Feather, who you will notice was not introduced in the last session. She was introduced by being a random trail guide with no explanation either to us or to the player herself as to why she was actually there. Now, an interesting thing about this character is that the player made her a child in elf years. Oh, no. Fuck. Th this is a start. <clears throat> oh, this is this is it. We're going to start a bingo game. Does it involve furries? Does it involve paedophilia? Does it involve sexual harassment? <laughs> Does it involve... You know what I mean? Thank you. Know. A fact which eluded the DM for the entire campaign. Needless to say, it made it very odd that she was a trail guide in the middle of nowhere, for no reason, with no connection to anyone around. And so we continued on our epic journey towards the horny cat man. <laughs> <laughs> we, I can't that seriously at all. We got into some uneventful fights that were not worth recounting, and were mostly filler, until we arrived in the city, at the edge of a cursed desert, I mean, the whole land is fucking cursed. cursed. <laughs> it's not just no desert, it's cursed. It's this whole fucking set. Which the DM then informed us was actually hell. Oh, the cursed desert was hell. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Well, you give us some context. <laughs> you could actually walk to hell. It was like a mile from the city. <laughs> <laughs> Our objective was on the other side of... <laughs> Our objective was on the other side of literal hell. But to cross it, we needed to find a guide are two guide options. The first one was described to us explicitly as a weird rapist. He immediately hated us and attacked a party member for no reason. He was already out, but we definitely weren't going to choose him. Yeah, so why was he even put in? Like, was, okay, what, did you have to pay him in sex? <laughs> Is that what, is that, was, was that the plan? No, but he's a rapist. He doesn't want to get paid in sex. He just wants to rape. But so there's no point. Look, 
Let me go right, on. Okay, look, yeah, fuck, come on, let's do this. So that left us with one choice. A choice that would haunt us for the rest of the campaign. The most epic, cool, badass, totally sexy DM player <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> he was oh oh I'm cringing so hard. Oh my god, I love that. He shit. was being executed, although we would later learn that he was actually immortal. So we don't know why he even cared. After saving him by giving them a different person to be executed, because that's how the law works apparently. He mentioned that he will only guide us if we steal back all of his stuff from a specific house because the DM already had an adventure he ran with another group and wanted to see what we would do with it. His words, not mine. After this mild distraction that takes about 45 minutes, we set off into hell, which apparently can only be reached with the power of the epic null furry DM player character. <laughs> Original character. <laughs> Weirdly fitting. <laughs> All right, okay. Well here, at least it's a null and it's better than being a cat person or a fucking wolf man or whatever. A gnoll is a wolf man. A gnoll's more of a hyena, but at least it's a bit different. A hyena for, man, I'm wolf man. I've yet to see a furry hyena. Are the furry hyenas? There probably is, but like, you know, they're not as popular. So I'll give them that. Well, like, there's furry Origin anthem at this a point. A bit of originality, never did anyone anymore. Jim, you know? shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> now, you may think that an epic quest that sends us through hell itself, filled with magic, twists and epic adventure, would be fun. Its own arc. Possibly enough to be a campaign in its own right. We got through hell in about an hour and a half of gameplay, which, if you remember, was around the same amount of time it took us to get gold or turned into gold <laughs> ingots. <laughs> so, in hell, we discovered that it effectively tries to be the opposite of what you wanted to be. Until it didn't. You see, the DM had it set up so that if we wanted something to happen, we had to do a willpower save to think of how hard we wanted the opposite to happen instead. Until an hour later, where he just stopped us having to do that, and saying that it was never what he was having us do, despite it being exclusively what we were doing for the past hour. Funnily enough, a thing that we did want to happen, happened. And the DM player character got eaten by a giant hellworm. Unfortunately, he was not... <laughs> Unfortunately, he was back within 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. Honestly, I don't... I, that actually sounds like a kind of cool concept. Like, you know, the opposite of what you want happens. But then it's very easy to break that. Yeah. It would be very easy to just like, Oh, well, I actually want this I don't happen. want you to die. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's very easily broken. You know? But I think it's kind of... I, there, was, it, there was a concept there, yeah. you know? Then, we escaped hell. Did that seem weird? Anticlimactic? And like we didn't really do much? Yeah, that's because it was. Once outside, we immediately see the city of horny cat people. <laughs> Just there, on a hill, right after hell. Imagine like, a, you know the way like Dante's Inferno was seven circles of hell? That has to be one for furries. <laughs> oh, 100. There has to furries, be. seven <laughs> furries, like three. furries, like three of those circles. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Once again, Another gigantic city, a simple jog away from hell like all good cities. We were described how it was all cool and magitech looking, with large magical airships flying in and out of it. I'm sorry, is this fucking Wakanda for furries? Oh, stop it. <laughs> now the city might sound like an interesting idea, a good place to explore, filled with mystery and things to interact and engage with. Now unfortunately none of those things happen in the city, and it just served as a glorified world hub for the entirety of the campaign. Once approaching the walls of this magnificent city, our DMPC guide informs us that the captain of the guard was his father, despite being two entirely different species and being on opposite sides of hell. Maybe there was a coherent explanation, like an adoptive father or something of the like. If there was, it was never explained, and to this day, I have no idea why this is the case. Be honest with me, that wouldn't be the first thing I would be asking questions no. about at this point. I think I would have just given up on asking. Like, Yo, so I, you know, I would totally you, give up. I wouldn't what? be there to begin with. Once <laughs> I walk in, I knew it was fur. I'd walk straight back out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that one? That was the nice? Homer. No, it was, it was Abe going into the brothel. <laughs> yeah, Abe Simpson going in, put this hat going, whoop, that'd yeah. be me. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it would be. Upon actually entering the city, the captain of the guard, who had an eye missing due to his son, because trying to kill your family is cool and badass and not at all edgy. 
allows us to enter the city surprisingly easy, despite our guide being a wanted and hated criminal by everyone. We learn that it's considered a hub among worlds due to its portal technology, allowing anyone to go anywhere in the multitude of all the planes of existence. All for the massive price of one silver per person. It's also at this point that we learn the backstory of my character is actually very important and despite never coming up before is now the main quest because the DM didn't think we'd make, the, we'd make it this far I suppose. So next up we have to go and imprison thousands of evil spirits before they destroy all the worlds across all the dimensions and so we set off into a portal into a cave which is a tale for another post. Stay tuned for part three. Aww, honestly, I, I, I feel like we should have maybe waited, you know, to get this whole story out, but I thought it was that good. Yeah, well, we can do the part three once, whenever yeah, it comes out. Let us know then, like. but go, I really enjoyed this. It, it, you know, there's so, I do really enjoy D&D horror stories. There's something oddly fun about them, just because... I don't really know what it is. I just, I, I guess, I, 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 what, what's that German word, Sean, for you? I just like laughing at other people's misery. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I'm being honest with you, it's like, oh. Okay, I, I, no, Well, no, it's not that. And that and also, I like to, like, you know, I, I get into these arguments with people all the time on the end. Now, people saying, like, oh, furries aren't all that bad. It's like, well, no. look, I'm sure they probably aren't all that bad. But I'm still going to call them cancer any opportunity I'm given. <laughs> and even when they're not being pure cancer, I'm still going to just call them cancer. Because I just enjoy Hold calling them cancer. Hold on to your hats, boys. <laughs> the furry sympathizers are coming. I know. I know. I can just see it in the comments. Not all furries are like it. Oh, suck my balls. Tell me they're not all fucking up to no good. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's plenty of like nice dead on furries. But the amount of them... If you divide that by the number of furries that shit themselves, that fuck dogs, <laughs> that fucking skin their fucking pets. Uh, I'm going to put the news articles up. I'll put this up on screen. Skinned the fucking animals. You know, molested all these animals. You know, look, you, yeah. you, you, you're not giving me shit there, here. There's too many, there's too many um, um, coincidences for not to be. Yeah, so I'm sorry to say, furries are cancer, weebs are just fun to bully. Yeah. That would be a good... I don't know what we've done with this. Honestly, look, I really this enjoyed this. Look, I really enjoyed this D and D story. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this too. I'm go look go- at the models. Yeah, go check out the models, and I really hope this author does a part three because fit, the um, models. Yeah, actually, yeah, I've got loads of new models. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Look, I look, don't know. We're look, rambling. Look, we're rambling. See you, bite. Wash your balls. Wash your butt. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs>